Welcome to Mastering and Guide Learning Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. One of the criteria for uh, diagnosis of cardiomyopathy is that the, all uh, changes and finding is not due to uh, coronary artery di disease. So first of all, we have to rule out uh, if the patient has uh, MI or not. And the most important criteria for the most important parameter and criteria for detecting coronary artery disease, especially in those cases with the bundle blanch block, because they have abnormal wall motion too, that I explained in another lecture, you can check it out, is a thickening of the myocardium. Always we have to go whenever we have any uh, challenging and complicated cases, we have to go find those criteria. Now let's see if the patient has coronary artery disease, especially ischemic or not. As you can see on the apical for two plaques and PZAX, we have some abnormality at the apex, thickening. Base, mid and base, you can see thickening very obvious. If you are not sure, you can pause it frame, uh, frame by frame, go back and forth, uh, see if that segment that we are suspicious is thickening or not. As you can see here, even hyperkinetic here, we have hyper uh, normal kinetic at the sigmoid, but here a little uh, we have thickening. If especially you frame by frame, you can see still there is some contraction, but not too much. So we have hyperkinetic here. But at the apex, you can see especially at the apical to inferior wall, apex and infero uh, apical here segment apical inferior and here generally apex is very hypokinetic and even sometimes you can say no this is completely akinetic on here apical uh, five we have a thickening here at the level of the septal apical but the, at the apex even is not clear but if you frame it zoom on this you can see apex here doesn't have thickening on the PZAX if you go there, you can see, especially on this view, we have at this level, uh, septal or more accurate inferoseptal has akinetic. And here you can see at the inferior wall, close to the basal view at the level of the inferior of the septum completely here, we have kind of akinetic. So all of them represent the patient has uh, CAD, post-procedure CAD can happen for many reasons. We are not going to talk about that. And maybe you will say, okay, the patient with cardiomyopathy can have uh, add-on uh, CAD too. Yes, that's true. But the process of cardiomyopathy is long and chronic. It's not that suddenly in one week or a few weeks, the cardiomyopathy uh, present itself. Uh, and in this case, patient before procedure didn't have any problem. EF was normal. There wasn't any wall motion abnormality. All these findings represent the patient had CAD not cardiomyopathy. Here are those extra view that you can see much better those. Uh, I can, here actually we have dyskinesia at this level, bulging during systole, especially on this view much more you can see here we have dyskinesia, not only akinesia, dyskinesia. And here this one in the sh short axis is very obvious, even thinning, we can see thinning at this level very obvious here. We have thick thinning, not thickening, not only thinning, thinning and a little bulging out during uh, systole. So is this all view can show this patient had CAD, not cardiomyopathy. Here, based on those all and strain, you can it, uh, prove that uh, you are right. First of all, here exactly at the inferior apical, we have inferior apical, 
dyskinesia here the blue one and severe hypokinetic in other those segments is very obvious and if you remember from the uh, plaques on the plaques this patient here at this level as you can see here is basal but on the images basal thickening but here mid uh, septal i prefer say this one maybe here is more accurate uh, we say we have some kind of the hypokinetic at this level but those numbers represent those spots that we have the scattering hypokinesia and dyskinesia in different segments and global is for the global that is uh, completely abnormal but the most important is those segments exactly that correspond with 2d that we talk about that here we uh, i ask if the patient trace is correct for in the osteoic volume the measurement is correct or not and <clears throat> is this patient has uh, left ventricular enlargement or not first of all when i mentioned in another uh, lecture that the differences between apical 4 and 2 always look at the number for any measurement that i explain again on the measurement on 2d and uh, Doppler everything I mentioned many times look at the number on the specific here for the volume on two chamber and four chamber there shouldn't be too much differences maximum five uh, up to ten percent differences on the volume is acceptable more than that there should be first there is wall motion abnormality and every small in one of those wall for example inferior or in septal uh, or lateral in the apical four but in the apical two we don't have it anyway in those walls that they are not common between the four and two if we have abnormal wall motion we can see more than five to ten percent differences otherwise in normal situation there shouldn't be more than five to ten percent differences between the measurement of the volume left ventricle second uh when you measure it because if you imagine uh, our measure our uh, sector sounds it should pass through exactly at the center of the left ventricle as a cone shape in apical 2 in apical 3 in apical uh, 4 doesn't matter imagine with millimeter changes our cross section sectors uh, sound pass through millimeter of the axis and it uh, cause a lot of differences for the volume measurement so the general rules was that when you do me for any type of measurement you want to capture that cliff and go for measurement always ask the patient hold his or her breath then when you have good images capture it that moment and then go for measurement so those remember those two important uh, tips <coughs> sorry uh, and then uh, make sure your image is correct uh, meaning is your right axis and right view in this case as you can see the tech has measured this uh, this one for the two kit as a four chamber you don't see here right ventricle is some kind of between two and four between two and four that is hundred percent that is wrong for uh, measurement here uh, we did it uh, correct window you can see four chamber very classic four chamber right ventricle and everything here was 163 but measurement 205 uh, on two chamber because it's completely view correctly we got it the same 195 so five percent of the 200 and between two is less than five percent five percent differences so generally if you want to say it, this is left ventricle and the osteolytic volume is 200 milliliter that the, the base on the body surface area you can say at least there is moderate left ventricle enlargement uh, there is uh, i put it in the chart uh, those uh, parameter and number for uh, the heart you can see and uh, use it that clip in short short clip here uh, the question was if the measurement is correct or not for aortic root it doesn't matter aortic root and ascending aorta should be measured the same way 
First of all, based on the ASEAN, European and British uh, society, the measurement should be uh, for the aortic root and ascending aorta. At the end of the diastole, means our uh, frame should be at the uh, almost QRS, any at uh, the complex of QRX, QRS, uh, when the valve is closed. Doesn't matter, sometimes is at the Q, sometimes at R, sometimes at S, just at this uh, level. Here, as you, as you can see, this measurement at the mid diastole, this red one, is show that frame has been measured at that moment. So that is wrong. And we measured it at end diastole was uh, 3.5 millimeter, five millimeter differences. And you know the size of the any of measurement, uh, LVOT and all those stuff, ascending, root, at different time of cardiac cycle has a lot of differences number. So based on that, this is completely wrong. A second, <coughs> many, uh, some cardiologists uh, prefer, especially those sur surgeon, they prefer measure at the peak of the systole. In those cases uh, that the cardiologist or the, or the facility want to measure at that and especially for follow up, the best way you have to do is that go and measure exactly the same time that previous study has been measured. Just they we want to see and cardiologist or surgeon want to know how much changes happen. Measure at the same time previous study, but add on the classic and correct timing of the measurement so two times measurement and mention on your report i want to ask all of you do something close your eyes and make room uh, relax put yourself on the relaxed position and close and take some deep breath in and go back to your childhood the youngest age that you remember good or bad doesn't matter just review your all your life up to this moment. As you can see, life bypass very fast, good or bad, all of them will gone. Nothing stay forever. The effect may be stay, but the most memory and time passed. You cannot change any of those from the uh, past. You cannot add on anything or change anything, but you can learn from those past if you made mistake and hope to use that for your future that you don't repeat that one. That is the point of the past, nothing else. Stocking in the past doesn't help you at all. It's your fault or other people's fault. Forgive them and if still they are in your life, if you still they are the same person, cut them off. Doesn't matter whoever it is. Never fool yourself. And enjoy every moment of your present. This moment will pass very fast. So make a good memory. But don't forget, don't as much as possible, don't make too much mistake. And we are living average majority of the people 80 to 90 years so we have a lot of time in ahead to enjoy this moment and plan for future up to the next time have a wonderful time